Ah, hey people. So, I haven't posted in a while. Um, again, I'm doing these videos primarily for me. I'm not really doing them for any, you know, anybody else in particular, but I just, if you're curious, please stay. If you don't care, please go. Honestly, I mean, if, if I, especially on this video, if I see one negative comment, I'm blocking you. It, it just even anything slightly negative, I will block you, because I'm going through a lot right now. Um, if you, if, if you haven't been paying attention, let me kind of give you a summary. Um, June of last year, I was living in the Bay Area. I was living in, um, in Orinda. Uh, I worked in Moraga, which just are basically on the other side of the, the mountain and through a park in, from Oakland. So you kind of have a general concept of where, where, where I was at. Um, the place I was living in, shot a couple videos there, you saw, if, if you go through my channel, you'll see them, and I found out that I was a ghost tenant, that the owners of the property didn't even know I existed, which would have been perfectly fine if the people I wasn't renting from got, didn't get themselves evicted. They got evicted, so did I, even though my name never touched a piece of paper, so in the future, if I ever need to rent an apartment, I don't have to worry about that, so I'm, that's, that's the only saving grace on that. Um, so I wound up um, in a panic, calling my parents and saying, help, they did, and within 24 hours, of getting a knock on my door, opening it to two sheriffs, one with a gun pointed at me. Uh, I was in this room. Um, when I showed up, my dad was <laughs> in the middle of cancer treatment. He has stage four terminal cancer. And he was looked horrible when I got here. So I jumped in, started helping, um, you know, looking for a job that's been tough up here because of what I do for a profession. I'm a professional chef. Um, this is kind of, you know, this is, this is a food desert. You know, pretty much everything here is either tiny little mom and pop shops or uh, corporate, and those are kind of the two areas that I do, don't, don't really work for, um, that's not really, you know, that's not really what I do, I'm not a, you know, and, and, and I could be the chef of, of a high-end restaurant, but I don't want to be a chef of a high-end restaurant, I like a nice mid-level you know, and even then, I don't want to be the chef. I want to be basically just there. I want to be the third man. I want to be able to jump in to literally any position, and basically, if I need to run the restaurant for the day, I can do that, blah, blah, blah. None of that is important. So, over the past several months, I've seen my dad go up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, this is the original issue we had when, when I first got here. We were able to handle that. Great. He was, within a, within a couple weeks, he was back up on his feet. You know, he couldn't walk long distances, but, you know, hey, we have mobility cards, so, you know, like scooters, so we're... We're not, you know, too worried about that. He has the walker. We have the wheelchair for him, all that. That was great. So, but he was, 
you know, a little foggy, but he was able to have conversations. And over that time period, um, we kind of fixed some of, not, not all, we, we both admit that, you know, there's both things that we have issues with each other that will never be resolved, but that's just, you know, being human. And he was doing fine. You know, he was, you know, he still, you know, we understand that he still has cancer, and, you know, this is going to be terminal, but, you know, we're trying to extend his life as long as we can. And then, a couple weeks ago, he found out that he had uh, brain cancer. Uh, there was 12 spots. Um, and, and anybody who thinks, oh, you're breaking HIPAA because you're talking about if the person... No, I'm not a doctor. HIPAA only applies to doctors. If you don't know that, learn the, what you're doing. I've worked inside of um, hospices and retirement homes and have been very much subject to dealing with HIPAA with those places. When it comes to my personal private affairs, there's nothing about that. So if that's something you're thinking, screw off, fuck you, go, go away. So, find out he has the brain cancer. And they decided, in their infinite wisdom, to do radiation treatments. I, when I heard it, I went, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. Not a, not where his health is at right now. I didn't think it was a good idea, but he decided to go through the treatments. He decided, him and his doctors decided, here's a place, here's the doctor, boom, 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 cool. Day one happens, I'm not involved. Day two happens, I'm not involved. Day three happens. Suddenly, I need to get involved. And, I mean, he was still able to, you know, to stand up under his own power, you know, even a little shakily. Um, but just over the next two or three treatments, he was rapidly getting worse. And I went, this is, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is, this is wrong. So, last Monday they went down and met with one of the doctors, I guess his cancer doctor, and his doctor was like, saw his condition and went, stop this now. And we immediately went into conversation about getting some hospice care. Just somebody come by once a day for a couple hours, you know, you know, take care of him, clean, you know, clean him, do anything that needs to be done, blah, blah, blah. And went, okay, that's great. He had been sleeping in his chair, and that was fine. But when the hospice people came immediately we wound up getting him a bed we wound up getting him oxygen we wound up getting him something to clean you know help with with you know, with um he was having issues with uh, too much saliva blah 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 so they got all that set up a couple days ago he was still able to have a conversation. Right now, as we speak, he can't communicate. He's sleeping pretty much all the time. Even to do simple things, he can't stay awake for 
more than 30 seconds. And so we pretty much are just leaving them alone. The hosp the original hospice people we had just they didn't seem to know what they were doing. You know, they didn't, you know, whatever. They they um they kind of just um they would you know we, we had no schedule with them whatever blah 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 um and we wound up getting another blah 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 last night I had to spin every 15 minutes for multiple hours just going and checking his oxygen and, and adjusting his oxygen and we were trying to get his oxygen up if, if you don't know they have these little finger cup things that you just clip over the ends of your fingers and you press a b button and for some reason it tells you your blood pressure tells you your oxygen level and what your heart rate is blah 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 it's you know kind of cool whatever I did it on myself and I found that my blood oxygen level was like 95. My dad, when we first started, was in the 70s. That is dangerously low. I mean, he was huffing and puffing. You know, his heart rate was super high. And in his condition, that is super dangerous. So... We were able to get <clears throat> get his oxygen level to a, you know to a good level uh, the night before. His oxygen level went a little down this morning. We wound up getting it back up. Blah blah blah. This is hard. This is super hard. I I don't know. I don't know. I, I we had a bunch of family come by yesterday, and I couldn't go out. I, I had to have family come in my room and spend time with me because I I couldn't go out and and deal with that. And I am so emotionally. I am physically drained. I don't. And, and the, the worst thing is, is that there's nothing I can do about any of this. I can just, all I can do is be there and support them. Last night, I haven't, we've been, because of everything going on, I haven't been able to actually cook for the past like two and a half months. And last night I was like, I have to cook. I have to cook. I cannot do, I, 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 it just something in me said, I have to cook. And so I made some stir fry last night. And my mom and my uh, my aunt from my dad's side who's here visiting and helping um, they both liked it and I appreciated that I had it I was like yeah okay I know it's good but you know whatever something that I truly love to do because of the situation became a chore At this point, it's just sitting waiting for my dad to pass. And I really, fortunately, really, that, the, the stuff from that point forward, the, the hospice people we're dealing with now, they'll handle that. They've already got 
um, he's going to be cremated. We already got that handled. They've already paid for that. That's already taken care of. Um, so all of the post stuff is already dealt with. Um, minus the emotional. The financial, not perfect, but, you know, essentially, um, there's some life insurances, there's some, uh, there's a trust that we will keep my mom secure for the rest of her life, and she'll be able to stay in this house, um, once, every, you know, my dad passes and my mom passes, then I'm gonna, you know, for somehow, somebody, I get told that I'm gonna be receiving the property, um, which pretty much I know I'm gonna immediately sell and use this to keep basically my retirement funds and it's just like that's pretty sad that that's the life that I'm living. I I even re, I I don't even know what, what day it is anymore. I have a calendar on my wall and the only reason I have the calendar on my wall is if I re, if I get a call to, to go to work, I can put it on my calendar and told, because I'm, a, I'm an on-call on call security guard right now. I don't want to be doing this job. I'd rather be cooking, but I can go on about all that all day long. But this is a thing, and I know I just have to go through it. And coming out the other side, yes, we're gonna lose somebody who's important to all of us, but we still get to move on. Life goes on. A little side tangent because I, I kind of, I, I just need to, to do this. If you've ever read the Disc World books. If you were like me listen to the audiobooks or even saw any of the live action or animated adaptations. Death inside Disc World. I was to, to believe that death was real. It was a person not just a thing, but actually a, you know, person. I want that, because death on this world is kind. It can be vengeful for those who will take it. But if you were a kind soul, he will be kind and help guide you to your resting place. This world, if you believe in an afterlife, that afterlife exists. So whatever my dad believes about the afterlife, if it exists, I know he's going to be there. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in any of that. But I don't want him to go to where he wants to go. I wish I could do something to help, but I can't. I can just support. And yeah, you get told, oh, you're doing a good job, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that. And I'm like, honestly, I just want to be left alone. So, I don't mean to cry, but this is what it is. So, eventually I'll get back to doing what, I, what this channel is meant to do is talk about the things that I love. But I can't do that right now. So, if you put a, a thing to support, thank you. If you put something negative, I'm blocking you. But beyond that, that's, I could talk for hours, and I probably need to. But 
I can't. This is the, the person you see right here. I can't be this when I'm out there helping with a realm family. This all has to be shut off because there's a job to do. So, anyways, I could ramble on for hours. So, that'll be it for now. Keep always safe.